Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Sapursky. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future of work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today I want to talk to you about onboarding, specifically some of the challenges that we've been seeing with onboarding for hybrid and remote staff. Let's talk a little bit about the broader role of onboarding first. Starting a new job can be seen like diving into a swimming pool. If you have a great refreshing dive, that's a positive onboarding experience. Poor belly, poor onboarding is more like a belly flop. So you don't want to do a belly flop. That really negatively impacts new hires and their retention rates, their productivity and efficiency rates. It's especially problematic for remote and hybrid workers. I want to talk about specifically a survey by Paychex, which shows the negative effects of poor onboarding on retaining staff. Only 52%, just over half of all new hires, find onboarding process satisfying. 32% find confusing and 22% find it disorganized. So that's not great. What about remote workers? 36% find it confusing, baffling. So Gen Zers, we know, are happier with onboarding than Gen Xers, 62% versus 43%. So younger people are happier than older people, which is kind of counterintuitive. You'd expect that older people would be better at being onboarded because they're more used to switching companies, they're more experienced. But in fact, we find that there's insufficient attention paid to onboarding of more senior personnel. A poor onboarding leaves staff uncomfortable, dejected, especially when thinking about training. 52% of new staff feel undertrained. With small firms, that's 66%, and remote workers, 63%, so more than the average for both small firms and remote workers. 58% of Gen X feels undertrained compared to 45% of millennials. So again, older workers tend to be undertrained. Again, likely due to firms perceiving them as having sufficient training from the, their previous experience, which is really not a great standard. So companies really should focusing, focus on closing these gaps for good retention and productivity. Onboarding is a make or break experience for new hires. 50%, half of all new hires plan to leave them according to the paycheck survey. And that's 80% if they are undertrained because of poor onboarding, they plan to leave soon. By contrast, well-trained employees have a pretty low plan of exit at only 7%. So if employees report being well-trained, they have a much, much lower likelihood of leaving. Small companies see more exits than large companies. So 59% for small companies versus 38% for large companies. And part of that explanation is a more standardized, clear, effective onboarding plan. And that Gen Z is most likely to plan a quick exit, so you should keep that in mind. Re-onboarding is a process where you onboard people again. So you, they go through the previous onboarding process, of course, adapted to pre people who have been there before again. And that's an opportunity to re-engage and revitalize your team members. Employees become 47% more focused, 42% more energized, 34% more productive, 33% more efficient, and they are retained better at 43%. So re-onboarding can be a really positive experience if you approach it correctly. Let's talk about some of the prices of poor onboarding. So these are some cases I've observed when I've been brought in to address hybrid work and remote work, and this is some of the reasons that they brought me in. So one SaaS firm, software as a service firm, had poor onboarding that had resulted in high turnover rates among remote and hybrid employees. The employees lacked clear guidance and expectations. They had poor training, and this resulted in employees feeling undertrained and undervalued, works, engagement and commitment as a result, and 60% turnover rate within six months. Now, this company had a certain approach to in-office employees but it didn't adapt this approach to remote and hybrid employees. And so that was a big, big problem for them. So, and in terms of major recruitment and training costs. So let's talk about another example. So there was an agency, the marketing agency, which had issues with growth because of poor onboarding. 
So new hires who were hybrid and remote, they lacked essential skills and they weren't trained in these skills sufficiently, resulting in poor work quality, missed deadlines and poor customer service. So the agency as a result struggled to attract new clients, retain existing ones, and that of course hindered their growth plans, and hindered their bottom line, not great. Another example is a financial services firm. It had compliance issues because of poor onboarding. So the onboarding process lacked sufficiently clear coverage of policies, procedures, and legal requirements, which previously, if people worked in the office, they would have picked up by a little bit of osmosis. But when they're working in a remote slash hybrid setting, that didn't take place nearly as well. So that had resulted in errors and oversights by new hires who couldn't immediately and effectively check with people who are right around them about these issues. So they made some bad decisions because they didn't have sufficiently adequate onboarding. And so the firm was penalized for non-compliance and that caused financial strain and reputation damage. That's why they brought me in to improve their onboarding process. Now, there are some cognitive biases in remote onboarding and cognitive biases in general cloud judgment cause bad decision-making and create misconceptions around new employees, their performance and their potential. For example, the idea that very experienced employees don't need onboarding. The halo effect is one example. So the halo effect occurs when positive qualities in one area, it's kind of like you have a halo around one area. They influence our perception in other areas. So we might perceive someone as being highly competent in one area and we underestimate their lack of competence in some other areas. So a new hire with an impressive resume may be seen as more competent than they are, and often that's the case, and that results in unrealistic expectations, and they have inadequate training and support in the onboarding process. Due to the halo effect, we might assume that some employees excel at all aspects of their job, but they actually struggle with challenges like staying organized, maintaining work-life balance, Specific areas of the company, like financial compliance, I mentioned before. So ignoring these challenges leads to inefficient training. And you want to combat the halo effect by giving everyone equal training, regardless of their past achievements, to make sure that there are no gaps. Another is the optimism bias. This bias overestimates positive outcomes and underestimates negative ones. So an onboarding optimism bias underestimates the time and resources it takes to actually thoroughly onboard people. It assumes that people will easily adapt without sufficient support. So that excessive optimism about employees results in inadequate training and struggles in time management, collaboration, teamwork, and cohesion. To address the optimism bias, acknowledge potential challenges for new hires, especially those who are remote and hybrid, and address any issues that may arise. Plan for them proactively provide suitable training and resources, and create a supportive onboarding experience by recognizing these struggles up front, ideally by providing mentors to folks. To optimize your onboarding process, make sure that new hires feel welcomed, informed, and valued. So welcomed, informed, and valued. Those three elements. Refine the process to make sure that you focus on staff retention, morale, and productivity. Have a good onboarding software to create a smooth transition for staff and focus on your unique needs, whether it's the industry, the generations that you're hiring, the company size, provide necessary support and resources for new employees to succeed. Create an onboarding plan with clear goals, milestones, and clear roles, and pair new hires with mentors, mentors who can guide them on their work and for cultural and team cohesion integration. Offer skill development and support in a whole variety of skills that might be relevant that people might not have had from the previous experience, especially for people who are remote and hybrid. Foster an open culture for questions and team trust and gather feedback to refine and enhance the onboarding experience over time. All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you checked out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show.